Bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Intentional. The power of persistent prayer. This woman's story, which is a parable, it gives insight into Dr. Luke's editorial comment. Uh, the doctor editorializes chapter 18 by giving us the key to the parable before he tells us what the parable is. Before Telling the story, Luke gives a powerful editorial. Luke says in verse 1, And he, speaking of Jesus, spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. That's not what Jesus said. That's what Luke said. The doctor tells us in the beginning that this is the meaning of the story. That you pray. He offers prayer as an antidote to fainting. To faint literally means to lose heart. It is to give up. Most people, especially, especially believers, believers actually get every prayer that they pray answered. If they just pray until the answer comes. See, most of us give God an artificial time limit. And so we tend to give up on our prayer before we even get an answer to the prayer. Amen. Well, the key to what I want to drive home today is don't stop praying. Pray until you hear something. Pray until God says something. Because he's going to say something. Most people give up just one day before their plan of success happens. Had Israel just waited one more day, Moses would have come down from the mountain. They messed up the day before he came back. Isn't that something? So he says... Men ought always to pray and not to faint. To make sure that his listeners and by extension us, all who would read the Bible, would understand the importance of being intentionally persistent in prayer, that we would get this, our Lord gives us an illustration. He gives us a parable. A parable, simply put, is a comparison. It is a similar to, a simile. It is comparing one thing with another, particularly spiritual things with natural things so that the spiritual things can be better understood. That's why our Lord 
spake in parables. Simply put, a parable is a natural story told so that spiritual truths can be better understood. One might ask before I preach today, why was this so important to our Lord? What is the big deal about this um, that we pray and not faint? Why is it so necessary that we understand the power of being intentionally persistent in prayer. You might ask today on this Father's Day, why does this even matter to us? There are many answers, but I want to give you just two. One answer is that intentional persistence in prayer is one of, if not the most powerful weapon in the believer's arsenal. You can't make it if you don't pray. Paul put it this way in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. He said simply, pray without ceasing. And the, the scripture, uh, the instruction to pray without ceasing does not mean non-stop prayer. But it does mean it reflects the attitude of dependence upon God. And that in every situation where it is appropriate to pray, men ought always to pray. Prayer has to become our habit. And even when we're praying and we're not saying anything out of our lips, there is an there attitude to our, of our hearts being lifted to God. Amen. Believers ought to be prayer warriors. Paul was spontaneous in prayer. He prayed so much that many times uh, he erupted in prayer. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11, Paul, uh, as he's teaching them to stand fast in the Lord, he goes into a prayer. says in verse 11, Now God himself and our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ direct your ways, direct our ways unto you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men even as we do toward you, to the end that you may be established, uh, to the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God. Even our Father, look at this, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. This is just one example. I can give you many others where Paul just erupts into a spontaneous prayer because his life was one that is bathed in prayer. Believers must know the importance of prayer. Anybody who tries to demean prayer uh, is not thinking. Praise the Lord. Songwriter said, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to the Lord in prayer. A believer has to be a prayer warrior. Another reason that this parable uh, is so important is that this parable and the principles that are revealed in it was more for us. Today, than it was for those who were standing there listening to our Lord at the time. I believe that we were the intended, targeted audience. I don't believe that he left them out, but I believe that these things were said and they were directed to us 
at this time because the, the parable is set in the context of the last days. And Jesus knew when he was talking to those people that day that they were not living in the last days. But he also knew that this, these words would be recorded. Amen. And that preachers would preach it. And hopefully people would hear it and fully understand why the story about this woman is so important. Travel with me for a moment. Let's back up and go into the 17th chapter. Let's, let's look at verse 20 for a moment and I want to show you some things. The Pharisees, the enemies of our Lord, the religious leaders of, of the times were talking to Jesus. The Bible says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God shall come, he answered them. They, they said to him, tell us when the kingdom will come. We demand you, tell us. Well, he answered and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observations. That is, the kingdom will not show up with a whole lot of outward signs and with a whole lot of show. You won't see a, a bunch of signs in the sky. The, the, the kingdom doesn't show up like a political party, waving banners. See, because what they fundamentally didn't see and understand was, they were talking to the kingdom of God. Jesus came preaching the kingdom. He said to them, the kingdom does not come with observations. He says, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. He says, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. That is, the kingdom is among you. It is the kingdom who's talking to you. They miss God altogether. They were looking for the kingdom while talking to the kingdom. You know, it's amazing how blind religious people are. The Pharisees were the religious leaders of the time. And there's a blindness going on. And the blindness is manifested through sheer wickedness. Last Sunday... In last Sunday's New York Times, uh, an article was written in the Times, and you know if it's in the Times, it's public, um, and uh, the, the, the name of the article is Religious Liberals Set Out of Politics for 40 Years, Now They Won't End the Game, which the title is, is misleading because religious liberals have not set out of politics for the last 40 years. They have been involved in politics. But the story goes on and it talks about someone that we all know. And that is a, a former uh, North Carolina uh, NAACP President uh, William Barber. Barber has been uh, hired by the Planned Parenthood people and the LGBTQ community. They're, they're about to launch war on the black church to come against black preachers who preach against abortion. Do you not know that there are black liberals who call abortion uh, 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 reproductive justice? How do you call killing anybody innocent Justice. We are calling murder today economic justice. And one of the good reverend's arguments is he, he makes the, the argument of how many times a thing appears in scripture to gauge the importance of a thing. 
that Jesus talked more about the poor than he talked about homosexuality. Okay, well, he talked more about the poor than he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Does that make it less true that he is the way, the truth, and the life? He talked about the poor more times than he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life one time in scripture. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life one time in scripture. The Bible says one time in scripture, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth one time in scripture. It's written one time in scripture that there is no other name under the heavens given among men whereby we might be saved. It's written one time in scripture God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's written one time in scripture greater love have no man than this that a man will lay down his life for his, sin, for his friends. It's written one time in scripture where Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every man that believeth. It is amazing how blind religious people can be. This is why you got to make sure you're saved. Bring your Bibles to church. Don't judge what the preachers say based on whether or not you like the way he said it. Judge it on whether or not it's true according to the scripture. The scripture tells us thou shall not shed innocent blood. Will you tell me what sin or what, which sin, or which law, or what wrong have an unborn human being done to anybody at any time? And yet, we slaughter in the black community alone roughly 1,876 Babies per day. In the nation alone, 4,000 per day. Isn't it amazing? Our wonderful sisters make up approximately 8% approximately of the population. How is it that 8% of the population can be responsible for almost 40% of the nation's abortions? They are killing us. And you know who? You know what? I invite you to travel far and wide. Come back to see me. Go visit, go visit a church, not members. Uh, go a church per Sunday and, and go, come back after you visit them all and see how many will tell you about this. We don't even talk about it. What kind of preacher would see his own people slaughtered and say nothing? He needs to be fired. Amen. Amen. He needs to be fired. Look, you, you, got to, you, got to, you got to earn that suit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our worth is, is directly tied to our willingness to tell the truth. I'm going to preach fast. I'm going to move from this. When we talked about this during the concert Friday night, it was an amazing concert. Um, you, you, the church was just packed. You couldn't. People love singing. <laughs> uh, um, it was awesome. But we, it was a benefit. And um, I want to say this to someone because it needs to be said. I got a text from one of the members. There was a young lady who was in here when I was telling about the slaughter of, of our people. Young sister, I, I didn't meet her. I wish I had. She walked out of the concert and she was standing out on the lawn and she pulled out a cigarette. She started smoking. And um, one of the members said, ma'am, we don't smoke here on the campus. 
And I, I wish I would have been there to, to see the girl because I would have put my arms around her. She said, I, I need to finish this cigarette because he, he's talking about abortion and I don't know what to do. She'd had one. Let me say this to you. Had I, had I got a chance to talk to her, I would have hugged her and said, ma'am, I'm not, I don't know you and I'm not talking about you. You can't do anything about your past. And if you've confessed your sins, you are forgiven. That's not our point. That's not the point. The point is, we got to try and save the next one. We, we got to, something's got to be done. Have you, have you ever asked yourself why with all of the screwing we do, we can never grow from 11% of the population? How is it that our numbers never grow? It ain't for lack of having sex. 99% of our songs are about having sex. Everything is sexy. If it's not sexy, we don't want it. She don't like him because he's not sexy. So you got a good job. Yeah, but I want a bad boy. I want me a bad, he's, he's a good boy. I want a bad boy. Yeah, so she get the bad boy, you see her five years later, and she looked like a bad lady. Because that's what the bad boy is going to do to you. Say amen. All right, back to this. I'm making somebody mad on Father's Day. You know, the truth, the truth is, the truth is hard to swallow, isn't it? Say amen. But you have to ask yourself, why aren't our numbers growing? The Hispanics, their numbers are growing. They're now 17% of the population. And it happened quickly. They shot past us so fast. And, and, and the reason they have is that by and large, they give birth to their children. We abort more than we give birth to. There's a word for that. The word is genocide. This is what we are doing to ourselves. And the blindness causes us to embrace people who want to kill us and to fight against people who want to help us. Some of us hated the politician who was against abortion and loved the politician who was for it. Now, I don't care what a person tells me. Right. If you are not for my people, Amen. for all people, but for my people being born, we are done. We are done. Because it all starts with birth. I'll give somebody $1,000 cash money today. After service, out in my pocket, if you could show me one government program, one, oh, I don't care what kind of care you call it, one program that helps an aborted baby. Well, preacher, that's more than, than, ab than abortion, not to that child. It's the end of the road for that baby. Can't grow up. Can't discover anything. Can't be a leader. Can't be counted. And hey, preacher, pastors out there who are watching, can't grow up and be a member and join your church. Can't become a member of the pastor's aid. Can't give in the anniversary. Can't join the choir. All right. No youth department, no men's department, nothing. Help, Lord. The Pharisees were blind. And uh, I'm taking too long. And he said unto his disciples, let me get back to this. The days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, <clears throat> excuse me, and you shall not see it. 
He says, the day is going to come because of trouble. Tribulation. You're going to want to see me. He said, notice, it was the Pharisees in verse 20 who asked him the question. But he turns and begins to talk to his disciples. He warns us. He says, the day will come when you will want to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not be able to see it. And they shall say unto you, see here and see there. But he says, go not after them, nor follow them. I saw a young man downtown yesterday, and he had a shirt on, and the shirt had in big letter, letters, Buddha, uh, Buddha, uh, Buddhist, uh, Buddhism, the, the original true religion, Buddhism, the original religion. I thought about what Jesus said. Jesus, all who came before me were thieves and robbers. Christianity never boasts to be the oldest. It's just right. As, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, uh, the Lord admits that there were pre-existing religions. Don't let nobody fool you with this age argument. Well, this religion is older than Christianity. So was the Canaanite religion. So was the worshiping of Astaroth, Malcolm, and all of the gods of the Zidonians and all of them. Older than Judaism was the religion that Abraham was in before God showed himself to him and said, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And God created a new religion called Judaism. Oh, yeah. We never boast that we're the oldest. We're just true. We're just right. Bible speaks and says the world was in darkness before Christ came. All religious systems were wrong except Judaism. Then Christ came and fulfilled that. Say amen. amen. So if anybody ever tried to get you with that age argument, let them, after they finish talking, say, oh, we don't mind that. Say, but we know this, that when God got ready to speak and to have someone to speak for himself, uh, God have in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Jesus Christ, in whom he made heir of all things. My God, I'm glad to be a Christian today. So now, he says, when they try to tell you all this stuff, don't go after it. And then he says, uh, for, says because nobody got to tell you when, when I return. He says, verse 24, for as the lightning that fly, that lighten out of one part under heaven and shine up to the other part under heaven, so shall the Son of Man be in his day. In other words, Jesus, when I come back, you'll know it. Because ain't nobody going to tell you what happened. You'll be able to see it for yourself. Thank you for watching God First with Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. To experience this message in its entirety, call 877-463-3477 to purchase a DVD or CD. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day. God First.